I know what you're thinking. He's probably holding an Apple Watch right now. Nope, that's a Garmin. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and this is the brand new Garmin Venue SQ2. That is a long name. The Venue SQ2 is designed to be an affordable GPS enabled smartwatch with a vibrant AMOLED touch enabled display with wellness features to help you gauge your energy levels and fitness throughout everyday life. This watch joins Garmin's Venue 2 lineup as sort of the base model or entry level into the Venue 2 series, but don't let that scare you away from the Venue 2 SQ. Venue SQ2, I'll get that right eventually, because this watch has a ton of features and it actually outperforms the more expensive Venue 2 and Venue 2 Plus in a few ways. I've had the Garmin Venue SQ2 for a few days now and I've taken it out on a few runs while also wearing it in everyday life. So in this video, I wanna share some of the new features on the Venue SQ2, my initial thoughts on it, and of course, we'll compare the GPS performance and heart rate sensor performance against some of the competition out there. Along the way, I'll also be making some comparisons to the a very similar looking Apple Watch Series 7 because these things look a lot alike, even though they're pretty different. And of course, I'll be making some comparisons to the more expensive Venue 2 Plus to see what you get for more money. Before we dive into all the details on the Garmin Venue SQ2, if you find this video helpful or fun or anything, please consider hitting that thumbs up and subscribe button down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. That really helps me out. Also, if you're planning on picking up a SQ2 or the Venue 2 or any watch I show off in this video, check out the links in the description down below because those help support my channel as well. With all those plugs out of the way, let's move on to the first topic, which is going to be pricing and options. The Garmin Venue SQ2 comes in two main models. There's the base model, which is the one I have here. This comes in at $249. And then there's the music edition, which is $50 more at $299. The only difference between these two is the inclusion of storage for music on the music edition and none on the base model. Between the two models, there's also six different colors. If you go for the music edition, you have French gray, ivory, and black. And if you go for the non-music edition, you have cool mint, white, and shadow. And for reference, the Venue SQ2 I have here is the non-music edition that comes in shadow. And you can see that it's not quite black, but it's pretty close to black. It's kind of a dark gray look, and I, I think it looks pretty cool. In terms of the build quality of the Venue SQ2, it's basically entirely made out of plastic, just like the other Garmin Venue SQ, and even these higher end Venue 2s are mainly made out of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap or like it's gonna break or anything like that. It's a really high quality material. However, around the display of the Venue SQ2, you do have this aluminum bezel, which does look really nice and gives it kind of a premium look. The SQ2 comes in at 40.6 millimeters by 37 millimeters, and it's about 11 millimeters thick. So this is a very small device. And when you compare it to something like the Venue 2 Plus, you can see it is quite small, even compared to the Venue 2 Plus, but the thickness is really where it slims down because this thing is super thin. The Venue SQ2 does have quick release bands on the back here. You can pop these off with your fingernail and replace them with any industry standard 20 millimeter quick release band, which is pretty nice. And the Venue SQ2 comes in at just 38 grams in weight, which is extremely light, especially compared to this Venue 2 Plus, which comes in at 51 grams. Of course, just like basically every garment on the market, the Venue SQ2 is waterproof to five atmospheres or 50 meters so you can go pool swimming with it or even out in the ocean with it and you shouldn't have to worry about it. And when it comes to sensors built into this watch you do have a built-in compass, a built-in accelerometer, and of course the optical heart rate sensor around the back of the watch which does house an SpO2 sensor for picking up blood oxygen saturation. And you may have noticed there's a few sensors missing here because this is a more entry-level watch. This watch does not have a barometric altimeter for picking up elevation change or a gyroscope and I'll tell you why that's important later on in this video. In terms of the display on the Garmin Venue SQ2, as you may have noticed by now, this is a really nice display. This is a full color AMOLED touch enabled display with 320 by 360 resolution. And in person, this thing looks really nice. Over the top of this display is a Gorilla Glass 3, which should be pretty scratch resistant. However, it's not scratch proof, so you should be careful with it. And it should be noted that you probably can't put a screen protector on it because it is a curved edge display. And if you do, it might look a little funny, so just keep that in mind. This display does have an ambient light sensor built into it, so as you're in different lighting situations, it will automatically adjust the brightness, which is really nice. And in terms of visibility, this is a very bright, very vibrant display. And even in direct sunlight, I had no issues reading this watch when I was out on a run, doing whatever, even out in direct sunlight, it looks great. As you can see, the watch does keep dimming down and turning off because this is a gesture-based display. That means when you raise your wrist, it turns on so you can see it. When you lower your 
risk, it'll turn back off to preserve some battery life. However, there is an optional always on mode in the settings, which you can see in action right now. It does dim the display down so it doesn't totally kill your battery life and burn the display in because this is an AMOLED watch. However, if you do decide to use the always on display mode, it does kill your battery life quite a bit. And that's a good segue to go right into the battery specs on the Venue SQ2 because it's pretty impressive. So when you take the Garmin Venue SQ2 out of the box and use default settings, you'll get about 11 days in standby mode or smartwatch mode, which is really impressive because if you compare that to something like the Venue 2 Plus here, this watch only gets about nine days and the Venue 2 only gets about 11 days. So the cheaper Venue SQ2 has similar or even better battery life than the more expensive models. But like I said, if you do turn on always on display, it will crush your battery life down to about two to three days, depending on usage or brightness. So you do take a pretty big hit there, but it's still a lot better than something like an Apple Watch. Oof, I just burned the Apple Watch there. Sorry about that. Let's talk about GPS on battery life because that's typically where this type of watch can suffer but not on the SQ2, which is really interesting. So like I said, if you take this watch out of the box in default settings and go for a run or ride a bike and you track it with a GPS activity, you'll get about 20 hours with the standard all systems GPS accuracy. And if you need to squeeze a little bit more battery life out of it, you can switch into GPS only mode and get up to 26 hours of use. However, if you do opt to go for the music model, you'll only get about seven hours of GPS activity with music playing because the music does take a toll on battery life as well. With battery life, out of the way, let's move into the user interface on the Venue SQ2. The design of this user interface is very similar to what we saw on the Garmin Venue 2 and 2 Plus. It's got a different sort of look to it compared to other Garmin's, and it's a little bit more polished and kind of like friendly for the everyday user, which I like. And as I mentioned before, this is a touch enabled display, so you will be using your finger to interact with the interface for the most part, but there are two buttons on the side here. One is a dedicated start and stop button, and the bottom is a back button, but you can also use these to jump into your quick settings pretty easily. One thing I have noticed on the Venue SQ2 as compared to the Venue 2 Plus, for instance, is that the user interface is a little bit laggy. Like when I swipe around, you can see that it's not really real time. And I think this is due to the refresh rate of the display itself. Because if you look at the Garmin Venue 2 Plus I have here, and when I swipe around here, it's very smooth, like really buttery smooth. While the SQ2 does have this sort of like judder or jitter to it. It's not something that drives me nuts, but it is something to be noted. I'm not sure why it's like that. In terms of smartwatch features on the Venue SQ2, you've got the typical stuff that comes on a Garmin. So you can read all of your phone's notifications from within the watch. Like you can see here, I've got a bunch of my text messages and stuff. And if I click on one, I can actually dive in and read it right on the display, which is actually really nice, especially with a touch enabled display. So you can read it without having to use buttons and stuff. There's also a really nice weather widget that shows the current temperature and conditions. And there's also a forecast for upcoming hours hours and days ahead. Of course, you've got features like the calendar, which displays things that are going on throughout your day. Today was my kid's first day of school, which is really exciting. And the Garmin Venue SQ2 does have Garmin Pay on board, which you can access by holding the top right button here, diving into the quick control menu, selecting Garmin Pay, and now you can tap the watch on any payment device to pay for stuff so you don't have to get your wallet up. But keep in mind Garmin Pay is only supported by certain banks so you'll have to look into it first. Still, it is a nice feature to have. And like I said at the beginning of this video, there is a music and non-music version available for the Venue SQ2. This is the non-music version, but like you can see here, I do have music controls on board the watch to control my phone, which is really nice. So you can see here, I can skip forward, I can skip back, I can play and pause, and I can even adjust the volume of my phone's music right from the watch so I don't have to get out of my backpack or whatever. Diving into more of the wellness tracking stuff, you can see here I've got all the standard stuff you'd expect to find on a Garmin. It tracks your steps, your intensity minutes, your calories burned, it can track your hydration throughout the day to see how much water you're consuming. You've got your 24 by seven heart rate data here. So it tracks your heart rate throughout the day, 24 hours a day, every one second it's sampled. Below that we have Garmin's body battery, which is a really use useful feature for seeing how much energy you have left in your day. And this is all based on behind the scenes HRV data. Below body battery, we do have the stress tracking widget, which will track your stress throughout the day, your respiration rate, the pulse ox widget here, which shows your blood oxygen saturation, 
You've got your sleep widget here, which shows your previous night of sleep, how poor or good it was. Mine was pretty poor because my kid woke up in the middle of the night. And this is the updated sleep widget from Garmin. So it does have the graph that shows your deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and how often you were awake throughout the night. And all of these widgets are customizable. You can actually go through and sort them however you want. You can see I just clicked on sleep there and I can drag this around to position it wherever I want in the menu. I can also just remove it if I don't wanna see my sleep data. In terms of tracking an activity with the Garmin Venue SQ2, you've got over 25 activity profiles to choose from. You've got all the basics like walking, running, indoor running, treadmill running, etc. But there's also more unique things like pool swimming, high intensity interval training, cardio, yoga, Pilates, elliptical, but there's also even things like snowshoeing, uh, tennis, pickleball, paddle. It should be noted though, that there's no multi-sport or triathlon mode on the Venue SQ2. This is something Garmin typically leaves off the Venue series because they consider it more of a wellness device than like a hardcore training tool. You can, however, duplicate activities and rename them. As you can see here, I took the run activity and turned it into trail run because that's something I like to do. However, you can't name them anything you want. You can only pick from a pre-configured list that Garmin's put in the watch. And when you're actually recording an activity, you have four different data fields to view at a time in three different pages. And as you can see here, I've got my timer, my distance, my pace, my heart rate, and this is within the trail run activity. But if I wanna change this, I can go into my smartphone app or right on the watch itself and configure these data fields to be anything I want them to be. And there's also a heart rate zone graph in each of these activity profiles that you can toggle on or off. When it comes to Garmin as a brand, you kind of expect these watches to have navigation tools on board. Unfortunately, the Garmin Venue SQ2 does not. There is a very basic back to start function, which will kind of point an arrow in the direction of your starting point, but there's no mapping, there's no breadcrumb map, nothing like that. So if you're looking for mapping and navigation, you're gonna look for something else. This isn't the watch for you. The Garmin Venue SQ2 is compatible with external sensors. So if you wanna use a chest belt, heart rate sensor, an armband or something like that, you can. It works with AMP Plus and Bluetooth, and it'll also work with speed and cadence sensors for cycling, along with foot pods if you wanna use that for running. However, the Venue 2 SQ is not compatible with any sort of running power sensor like the Stride Pod or even Garmin's own HRM Pro running band. It doesn't work with those for running power. The Garmin Venue SQ2 can also broadcast its heart rate from the optical sensor on the back of the watch to nearby devices, whether that be a laptop or a treadmill, anything like that, which is a useful thing if you're going to a gym and you wanna use the optical heart rate sensor on the watch itself to record your run. The Garmin Venue SQ2 does have a couple of training tools on board within the user profile settings here. You do have fitness age and the estimated VO2 max widget, which does sync over to Garmin Connect, so you can track that over time. Because the SQ2 is in the Venue series of watches, there is no training load or training readiness or HRV status or recovery timer or anything like that on the Venue SQ2 like you would find on a Garmin Forerunner or a Phoenix. Just keep that in mind if you're shopping. The Garmin Venue SQ2 does have Garmin safety features on board. So you've got live track to share your location with friends and family. You've also got incident detection where if you crash your bike, it'll actually alert friends or family to let them know that you're in trouble and need help. This watch does not have built-in LTE or cellular connection or anything. So these functions only work if you also have your phone along with you just keep that in mind. Okay, with all those specs out of the way, let's talk about GPS accuracy because this is something that really surprised me about the Garmin Venue SQ2. So if I dive into the GPS settings, you can turn it off, you can use GPS only, or you can use all systems. And what I find interesting about this is this terminology sounds a lot like what you'd find on the Garmin Phoenix 7 or the Epix Gen 2 or the new Foreigner 955. And when I asked Garmin about this, they kind of confirmed my theory on this, that the Garmin Venue SQ2 at 250 bucks has a very similar chip to what's inside the Garmin Phoenix 7. So you do have that all systems mode with GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, and Quasi Zenith, which is a lot of satellite systems at the same time. Keep in mind, this is not multi-band mode like you'd find on a Garmin Phoenix 7, but it is all systems mode, which is really good in terms of accuracy. After taking the Garmin Venue SQ2 on a bunch of different runs, comparing it to different devices, I can confirm that this watch appears to have really good GPS performance, even compared to the Garmin Foreigner 955, the Coros Vertex 2, in this $1,000 Tactic 7. With GPS accuracy out of the way, let's talk about heart rate sensor performance on the Garmin Venue SQ2 from its built-in optical heart rate sensor. The Garmin Venue SQ2 comes with Garmin's Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor, which is the same sensor we have on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, and even the Garmin Phoenix 7, or the Tactic 7 in this case, they all have the same sensor now. And historically on this channel, from what I've tested in person, the Garmin Venue 2 and the Apple Watch Series 7 
are two of my top picks in terms of accuracy from the optical heart rate sensors on the back of the watch. And comparing all of these devices, the Garmin Venue SQ2 looks very similar to the Apple Watch Series 7, the Venue 2, my 400 955, they're all pretty good. And again, that's because these all share the same sensor and the biggest variable between these different garments is going to be the size and weight. If you wear the Garmin Venue SQ2 out on a run and have it strapped down really tight, it's probably not gonna move around. So it's gonna give you really accurate results. Now this Tactic 7 on the other hand is a big heavy watch. And when I run with this, it does move around a little bit. Okay, now that we're winding down to sort of the end of this video, I wanna talk about some comparisons between the Garmin Venue SQ2 and the older Garmin Venue 2 Plus, which is currently still the flagship in the Venue lineup. The Garmin Venue 2 Plus is currently $150 more here in the USA as compared to the Venue SQ2. The Venue SQ2 is smaller and lighter than the Venue 2 Plus. However, it's pretty similar in size to the Venue 2 S, which is the smaller model. However, when it comes to battery life, the Venue SQ2 is kind of the best of the bunch from the entire Venue 2 lineup. And on top of all that, the Venue SQ2 appears to have better GPS performance compared to these other Venue 2 models. Now that I've hyped up the Garmin Venue SQ2, why would you pay more money for the Venue 2 or the 2 Plus? Well, there's a few things. The Venue 2 does have higher screen resolution, so you get up to 360 pixels on these watches. It also has a gyroscope and a built-in altimeter. Why that matters is because there's a metric called Floors Climbed that only the Garmin Venue 2 and 2 Plus will pick up, not the Venue SQ2. That built-in barometric altimeter will also give you elevation data during activity. So if you wanna see how high you've climbed up the side of a mountain, you can do that on the Venue 2. You cannot do that on the Venue SQ2. Another difference between these watches, like I said, is the display it appears to have a higher refresh rate on the Venue 2 as compared to the SQ2. A few other minor differences include animations for workouts on the Venue 2 that's not on the SQ2. The Venue 2 also has running and walking detection during activities. If you want to know how often you stop to walk, that'll show up in Garmin Connect after the fact. That's on the Venue 2, not on the SQ2. The Venue 2 also has more activity profiles like hiking, indoor rock climbing, outdoor climbing, things like that that rely on that built-in altimeter. In in terms of music storage, they both can store music internally if you opt for the music edition. However, the Venue 2 can store up to 650 songs, where the Venue SQ2 can only store 500 songs. Will that matter to you? Probably not. And finally, the Venue 2 Plus here is built quite nicely. It does have a stainless steel bezel, and it's actually got a metal back to it as compared to the mainly plastic built on the Venue SQ2. And that's really most of the differences. Now that we've reached the end of this video, I wanna talk about final thoughts and who I think this watch is for. If you're looking for a device to help you in your everyday life with achieving your fitness goals, tracking your runs, rides, swims, gym sessions, all that stuff, and you also want a small, sleek looking device with a nice display and great battery life, I think the Garmin Venue SQ2 is going to be a really good option for you. In fact, in a lot of ways, the Garmin Venue SQ2 is superior to the more expensive Venue 2 and 2 Plus, especially when it comes to GPS performance and battery life, which is kind of crazy. On the other hand, if you're a hardcore runner, a cyclist, or a triathlete, there's going to be much better options out there for that $250 to $300 price point. For example, the Coros Pace 2, which is a $200 watch, has running power built in, it has training tools like VO2 Max, a training load, recovery advisor, that's all built into the Coros Pace 2 at just 200 bucks. Or even the new Garmin 400 255, which starts at $350, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it has a ton more features like navigation, running power, and much more for a little bit more money. But like I said, the Garmin Venue SQ2 is not for the hardcore runners and cyclists out there, it's really for the everyday person who's just trying to get in better shape and track their runs and bike rides and things Things like that and what a really nice AMOLED display and a good looking watch overall. And now I want to hear from you, the viewer out there. Are you getting a Garmin Venue SQ2 or are you going to get something else like the Coros Pace 2 or the Apple Watch? Let me know in the comments down below what features sold you on it or why you're not interested. I'd love to hear from you. All right, if you're still watching, you probably enjoyed this video, so I would really appreciate it if you went down and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel down below because that really helps me out. Also, if you're planning on picking up a Garmin Venue SQ2 or the Venue 2 or Apple Watch or anything I've shown off in this video, check out the links in the description down below because they do up support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. Thanks. And yeah, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.